Okay, so a couple weeks ago, I picked up three bikes, this little CT70 and those two Z50s back there. And we did a little video. We walked around them, kind of checked out each bike. Um, the little white Z50 fired right up. The little red one is more of a parts bike. We were told this one would run, but uh, we did not get any spark. And we, uh, I think we swapped plugs, checked the spark plug and, and looked at some things and and uh, just for a second and didn't get anything. So today's video, we are gonna take a deeper look at this and diagnose why this one has got no spark. So let me get this table jacked up and get some tools out and then we'll start digging into it. All right, I'm pretty sure we did this in the other video. We uh, pulled the plug and made sure it didn't have any spark. And we checked it with a, the plug that was in it and the plug that was uh, with a new plug that we had. But I'm going to go ahead and double check that just to make sure. Make sure the key is on. Uh, we checked and the battery plug is plugged in. And we've got nothing. And let's just go ahead and put a new plug in it. Uh, the spark plug wire has been um, spliced on. This is the wrong cap and it takes the it takes the little screw on top on the plug that the regular CT70 doesn't have. Um, I've looked at the connection there. That connection actually looks pretty solid. I don't think it's in where they spliced that plug wire. Okay, we still don't have any spark. All right, so issue is not the spark plug, or it does not seem to be the spark plug. Oh, I forgot to take the cap off of that. We'll need that one for the, we're gonna go with the original plug. Okay, so before I just go tearing things apart, I think what I wanna do is try and figure out if it's behind the flywheel or if we've got a coil problem, a grounding problem, that sort of thing. So um, let me get my little checker out. Got one of these little handy dandy deals. And what we are going to do, well, I'll tell you what, let me get you set up for your uh, looking in a little better place. So what we're gonna be looking at is this plug right here. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, um, the blue and red wires go to the battery uh, and it has this plug that has this little black wire that just makes a loop, just comes up out of the one and goes back down into the other. And what it does, it connects these two black wires that you see here that are part of the harness on the bike. And one of those black wires comes up from the stator, sends power up through it, up through this black wire, loops around and back down to the coil, which is you know inside the frame um, there. So if you don't have spark, sometimes it can be because somebody has not plugged a battery in and if you don't put a jumper between these two black wires which is essentially what this is then you're not going to get spark you're not sending anything down to the coil so um we're going to first pull that plug apart and see if we're getting any kind of activity from the flywheel using this we're going to connect this end to the black wires and then ground out this other end while we're kicking it over. Um, I gotta get something to stick inside there. All right, so I'm gonna, got a pointer that I'm gonna stick in one of the black wires. And then we're going to take the alligator clip and just connect it onto the pointer. That way we making connection. Don't let it hit ground anywhere. Okay, can you if I 
set that right there. Are you guys, hang on a second. Are you gonna be able to see that? Yeah, just barely, but you can. So what I'm looking at is the little light that's in the inside of here. Um, so I've got it grounded against the case of the, of the engine. And so when I kick it over, make sure the key's on. Okay, we're not getting not getting anything. So uh, we're not gonna freak out yet. That might not be the wire. That might be the wire that goes down to the coil and not the one that goes to the stator. So let's switch it to the other one. Okay, there we go. So see it, uh, hopefully that's showing up on screen. We're getting a light to light up when we kick it over. So that means the points are opening and closing. Well, that's good. So we're getting, we're getting juice up through, we're getting juice up through one of the black wires, but I think I want to make sure that it's making that loop and going back down the other one. So I'm going to get my continuity checker, my multimeter. All right, I want to make sure you guys are looking at that because I've done this before and, and you weren't even looking at it. Okay, yeah, you can you can see it. Let me turn you up a little bit. All right, so I'm looking at the screen on the multimeter and I've got it in the ohms setting. So when I touch these two leads, we should see a different reading. We do, we've connected the loop connected to circle. So we're going to check and see if we can do the same thing here. We're going to stick one of these leads for one of the black wires and one for the other, and we are. So the problem is not in the loop. We are sending power up from the stator. It's making the loop, and it's continuing on down the other black wire. So... I'm starting to think maybe we've got a, a coil problem. We do have a lot of yucky nastiness down in there about where the coil mounts. So it may be a grounding issue. We may have, um, we may have lost ground between the coil body and the rest of the system. So Let's check that. Hang on, let's grab a uh, battery charger. So now we're going to bypass the rest of the harness and check, check just the coil. Um, all right, noise, I'm so sorry. So what I've got is a Schumacher one amp motorcycle battery charger. It's got a setting for 12 and six volts. We want to make sure it's on six volts since this is a six volt system. Uh, I need to plug it in to some power. Okay, yep, we've got, we got power. Uh, all right, so we're gonna use unplug this again and we're going to stick our little pointer into the black wire that we determined went down to the coil and then we're going to hook the positive to our little pointer so we should be sending six volts down to the coil Oh, we need to put our plug in our plug wire. And you're not going to see that. Hang on just a second. I'll tell you what, maybe I'll just hold it. Might be a little shaky, sorry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 
the, um, the, the negative of that battery charger and I'm gonna touch it to ground and hopefully we should see the spark plug throw a little spark if the coil's good. So let me get in there. Yeah, oh, there it is, see it? Focus on the plug. So I think the I think the coil is good and the and the spark plug wire is good. I'm not getting not touching a consistent ground. There. But anyway, so alright, I think that part is good. So unfortunately what that tells us is it's probably the condenser behind the flywheel on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed this video up. I'm going to go film it. I'm going to have to take chain guard off and take this cover off to where we can get into the flywheel um, and look at the, what's behind there. And I got a feeling we're going to have to swap out a condenser. All right, so I've got it apart. I'm not real hopeful here. Uh, one, I don't have a new condenser. You know, I just don't work on these original Honda engines very often. You know, I'm more known for the Lifens and the aftermarket engines, so I don't carry parts for the new, uh, new replacement parts for these engines. So I don't have a new condenser. I do have a a used one. And the other thing is I don't have a really good soldering iron. We'll see what we can get accomplished here, but I may, oh wow, that I wonder if it was even making connection with that condenser. Huh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that one out. I don't even know if that all was even making connection with that condenser. <laughs> that certainly doesn't look like it was. That doesn't look like it was soldered on there to me. If it was, it was very, very little. It didn't take us very much effort to get that loose. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and clean up. Make sure I've got some bare wire showing here. Hmm. This condenser has the little tab broken off for that little felt piece, which that thing is as dry as a bone anyway. I guess, I don't know if I'm looking. This condenser has is broken. This little piece here, this little felt piece, it's like, I suppose, I guess it's supposed to oil things or something as it spins. It doesn't. It's as dry as a bone anyway. It's not wasn't doing anything, so we're not gonna worry about it. Right now we're just trying to see if we can get the thing to actually have a spark. I think this is what our problem is, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Now, somehow, we need to try and get these.
hoping that that would heat it up, heat my solder up enough to let me push those wires in there. With this cheapy soldering gun. And I don't think I have any solder here at the shop. Let me, uh, I'm going to shut you off for a second. I'm going to go do some digging to see if I can find some solder to maybe try and help that out. Well, I've looked high and low. I really don't have any uh, solder. So I, I kind of got it to melt a little bit into the solder that was on there. And then I have just folded over the tabs that are on the top of the condenser. I think that's all they had done here. And I'm hoping it's it's going to make a good enough connection. So, I don't know. We'll see. I, I think I've got it, but I'm not 100% sure. Or I think I've got it good enough for us to see if it's uh, going to have a spark. So that's got that back together. Key is on. Let's move around to the other side and see if we did any good. I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna hold the camera instead of moving that noisy stand. All right, keep your fingers crossed. Oh, did I see something? I did. Guys, we have spark. So I believe it was that condenser. Sorry, it's moving around as I kick it. It's hard to... All right. So I believe we do have spark, so let's uh, let's see if it goes putt-putt. So let me get the stand on this side, put the spark plug in, and we'll see if it'll fire over. should have got a little fuel and hit that with some fuel. Okay, keys on. Crack it open, see if there's any fuel in the bowl. Yep, there we go. All right, keep your fingers crossed here. it would fire right off. Oh, I unscrewed the nut off of the flywheel. Well, shoot. Let's, uh, let's check spark again. Make sure we didn't lose our Sure we didn't lose anything. 
I never checked to see if it was in time. You know, I've never pulled the cover off. And we've lost spark again. Well, that was short-lived. Bummer. Hang on a second. Let me tighten this uh, flywheel down. spark again. Well, bummer. I'm going to pull it all back apart and see what I can find. All right, so I pulled the flywheel back off, kind of cleaned everything a little bit more, and we have spark again. So let's try this again. Went ahead and cleaned the points and just kind of, I cleaned the flywheel and did some things. Don't know what really made the difference. Uh, I, I did, you know, kind of look at that condenser again and pretty sure we've got a good connection there. All right. So the rest of that is for another video on another day, but we did, we finally figured out why it wasn't getting spark. Uh, it, I believe I'm 99% sure it was that condenser. Uh, I really need to get a better soldering iron and some good solder and make that a very, very good connection so it doesn't come loose first time you, you know, ride the bike. But, um... I hope that, you know, kind of explains a few things on how you would go about diagnosing if you have spark or not, um, you know, looking at testing the coil and making sure it has ground and doing all those sorts of things. But anyway, it was good to hear it fire off. So we'll save this bike and do some later videos on it, uh, maybe tear it apart, clean it all up. But uh, if you need to diagnose spark, that's, you saw how I did it. So everybody have a great day. See you on the next video.